2023 was a huge year for games, and why would they want to stop? Of course they don't want to stop. It looks a lot like they're trying to carry that momentum, and we got a lot of big titles hitting us in the first half of the next year. Hi folks, it's Falcon, and today on Game Ranks, the top 10 new games of the first half of 2024. Starting off with number 10, it's Tekken 8, which is a massive, big ol' thing. It's the first high-profile fighting game to use Unreal Engine 5. It is the first Tekken game to use Unreal Engine 5. And it is a hell of a look. Wowie. Tekken 8 is technically incredible looking, but it's also a Tekken game. So that means it's probably a very good fighting game. Tekken is fun as hell. Like it's, since its introduction, always been a game that people love. I've always come back to Tekken whenever they release a new one and I'm never disappointed, at least in how the game feels and plays. Sometimes maybe there's some issues surrounding it, but these are smooth, fluid fighting games that I really enjoy and can't wait to dive back into. I won't have to wait too long either. Tekken 8 is landing on the PlayStation 5, Xbox Series, and PC January 26th. At number 9 is Persona 3 Reload. As you know, Falcon the Game Bird has always been a big Persona fan, and I'm quite excited for a remake of Persona 3. It has been a long time since I've played Persona 3. I mean, I, I did kind of play the re-release here recently, but I didn't really beat it because I knew this was on the horizon. It's essentially Persona 3 and Persona 5 quality, and I'm there. It takes nothing to get me in the door on that. I mean, they've really done a lot here. Unfortunately, it does mean some of the content that was added after, um, like the female protagonist or the epilogue chapter, that stuff's not there, but they have redone all of the animated cutscenes, and it really is like Persona 3 at Persona 5 quality. Apparently, there's gonna be a lot more environmental stuff you can do too. They haven't altered any of the dialogue or that kind of stuff, but I mean, come on, why wouldn't you want to play this if you're a Persona fan or just a fan of these kind of like weirdo goofy ass let's talk about society but let's do it through the lens of a bunch of crazy crap oh and also like you have to go to school and crap and it's weird also I mean everything about Persona is super weird it's heightened to a degree where I'm sure it probably turns some people off but these are interesting games to say the very least I'm excited for this it's coming to the PlayStations the Xboxes and PC February 2nd and number eight is Alone in the Dark. So what is regarded as perhaps the progenitor of Resident Evil is being brought back in the very same way that Resident Evil 2 and 3 uh, were and were so incredibly successful. In fact, the developers, Pisces Interactive, were brought in by THQ Nordic to, in a lot of ways, attempt to replicate the successes of those games. Much like those games, it takes the fixed camera tank controlled alone in the dark and makes it into a third person over the shoulder, much more modern experience. Now, I'm personally very excited for this. If you want to kind of see how it works, there's a demo out right now called Grace in the Dark. It's a prologue chapter. It kind of sets you up uh, with expectations as to what this exactly is going to be. I think it really does a good job showing that this is going to be a great remake. I'm very excited for it. I think it's going to be pretty big. It's coming to PS5, Xbox Series, and PC March 20th. And number seven is Suicide Squad Kill the Justice League. Now, I absolutely want to note that this is maybe a controversial pick, but we're talking about big games that people are going to talk about a lot. And whether this ends up a bad live service style game, even if it's not necessarily a live service game by the time it comes out, or if it turns out to be very good, I think people are going to talk a lot about it. I uh, obviously hope for the latter. This is the last Batman performance by Kevin Conroy, and it's, it's a dark one from the looks. The game is set in the Arkhamverse, however, takes place in Metropolis, and all of the real big, great superheroes have been taken over by Brainiac, and it's your job to kill all of them. I, like I said, really do hope that this turns out to be a good game. The idea is honestly not something we've ever really been able to play, like superhero hunting. That's, that's potentially quite good, but also given Gotham Knight and all the live service stuff, there is good reason to be skeptical about this. So 
good to note, great potential, also potential to be a big flop. Either way, we're all going to be talking about it a whole lot. It's landing on the PS5, Xbox Series, and PC on February 2nd. And number six is Skull and Bones. I I mean, allegedly, we're actually going to get Skull and Bones. They've been advertising it pretty heavily. I've been seeing commercials for it. This game's been in development hell for a long-ass time. This was originally developed as an expansion for Assassin's Creed Black Flag as a spin-off MMO called Black Flag Infinite. That was way back in 2013. This project has also been a money hole, allegedly costing over $120 million. But over the last year, there have been a couple of closed betas, and people have come away from them weirdly optimistic about the game. A lot of the time, this type of thing happens over a decade, and then, you know, you get something like Duke Nukem Forever. But apparently, people are thinking that it's actually a pretty fun game with a surprisingly decent story. Now, I can't comment as to the validity of this information. I did not play the betas, but uh, I'm not as iffy about this. I mean, I've seen a lot of game footage, and it looks fun. I think the reason why we all wanted this game in the first place was because the ship combat and Black Flag was quite good, and it looks quite good here. Now, there is bound to be some degree of confusion because this game has existed for a very long time, and there have been a few different ideas as to what this was supposed to be, but it looks pretty straightforward to me from the gameplay, and it looks pretty fun. I'm excited to give it a whirl, and if it's as fun as it looks, I think that we've got a winner. Skull and Bones is landing on PS5, Xbox Series, and PC February 16th. And number five is Final Fantasy VII Rebirth, disc two of the Final Fantasy VII Remake. Um, If you liked the Final Fantasy VII Remake, it looks like it's a much bigger, more advanced version of it. For instance, the synergized mechanic is now a part of the main battle system. The main battle system, I of course gave a lot of praise for the first time around. I'm happy they have retained it rather than attempt some big change in that. I think it's a large part of Remake's identity because it does so much in retaining a lot of the elements of the original turn-based system in what is more or less an action RPG format. In all seriousness, this is going to be a great game. I like what they did with the first game. I like that they kind of made it so you don't really know what's going to happen because this is some part of a time loop in some way. And I think that that is a fun and interesting idea that kind of toys with the idea of a remake while also allowing us to have a remake. Uh, Probably the most interesting events in the entirety of the Final Fantasy VII narrative are pretty close on the horizon too. So I'm just really interested to see how this version plows through them, especially given the idea that things could change. Final Fantasy VII Rebirth is landing on the PlayStation 5 February 29th. And number four is Homeworld 3, a direct sequel that happens after the previous two games. This is a real-time strategy game. This series spans back to 1999. There was recently a remaster as well as a prequel, and that stuff did really well. And they're like, you know what, let's continue that narrative. Now, this to me seems like it may be a good idea. It may not, we'll see. But the game fuses the RTS gameplay of Homeworld with what they're calling a roguelike structure. So ideally, you're going to get a whole lot of replay value out of Homeworld 3. We shall see exactly what that equates to when it comes out, though. Homeworld 3 is coming to PC on March 8th. And number three is Mario vs. Donkey Kong, a Game Boy Advance game that came out in 2004 and is getting the full-blown remake treatment. Um, I mean, Nintendo's been kind of knocking it out of the park with uh, remakes of their older games lately. Mario RPG being probably the best example of that. This is a puzzle platformer where you got a lot of obstacles and you have to figure out how to get past them. It's a pretty hell of a fun game. I I remember playing it, but it's been a long time, I'm not gonna lie. Mario's gotta find keys to get uh, through a door, and he's basically rescuing, and this is the dumbest story conceit of all time, but mini Mario toys that Donkey Kong has stolen. Uh, This is actually, interestingly enough, very much 
the DNA of the original Donkey Kong game where Mario basically had to traverse upward to basically stop old Donkey Kong from stealing a, a, a woman. That's not really the conceit of this game per se, but Mario versus Donkey Kong was a spiritual successor to the Game Boy Donkey Kong, which kind of expanded on that original Donkey Kong. And now we're back to it on the Nintendo Switch, and it looks great. Mario vs. Donkey Kong is landing February 16th. And number two is Rise of the Ronin, an action RPG coming to us from Team Ninja. In a lot of ways, it's kind of a Eastern equivalent of all of the cowboy stories that are about the end of the Wild West. It takes place at the end of the Edo period and essentially plops you right into the middle of the Boshin War. A lot of people make a lot of comparisons to Ghosts of Tsushima, but uh, Team Ninja is also very... Um, well known for the Neo games. And I think it shouldn't be understated the amount of Dark Souls influence there probably will be on this. Granted, there's clearly Ghost of Tsushima influence here, but I think it's worth noting that these are not the same game, not having the exact same kinds of expectations. I think it's gonna be a pretty good game. I'm looking forward to it. Keeping in mind there will probably be a sequel to Ghost of Tsushima. It does have to be at least somewhat different from what that will be, uh, but I kinda expect them to have that figured out having done Neo. And well, I'm pretty excited for it. Rise of the Ronin is coming to the PS5 on March 22nd. And finally, at number one, it is Dragon's Dogma 2. I mean, Dragon's Dogma was pretty misunderstood when it came out, but it grew to major cult classic status. If you're not familiar, it's an action RPG that you got a lot of hack and slash stuff going on. You can feel a little bit of Devil May Cry influence, but it's also its own thing for sure. It's a Capcom game, so there is a fair amount of expectation for a sequel. And the sequel drastically expands on the first game, giving us a world that's four times the size, giving us our nice customizable pawn system to continue the ideas of the first game. And interestingly enough, they say that it takes place in a parallel world to the first game. So uh, it's not a direct sequel. Sequel. It is probably very much a sort of reset because it's been 12 years since the original game. And I would expect that it drastically expands on a lot of the concepts from the original game. Um, the team apparently was inspired by Grand Theft Auto V's emergent gameplay. So I'm excited to see exactly where that goes. Dragon's Dogma 2 is landing on PlayStation 5, Xbox Series, and PC March 22nd. I do have a bonus game for you, the Brothers A Tale of Two Sons remake. This is of course a great game, many consider it a classic at this point, but it is also kind of a, a game that was developed at a time where people weren't really sure what they wanted from graphics. Like some of it's a little cartoony, some of it's reaching for not cartoony, and I think sort of unifying the visual style and making it look much better without making it look like not cartoony anymore. It's a good idea. I'm excited to play Brothers again. I certainly will. It's landing on the PC, PS5, and Xbox Series on February 28th. That's all for today. Leave us a comment. Let us know what you think. If you like this video, click like. If you're not subscribed, now's a great time to do so. We upload brand new videos every day of the week. Best way to see them first is, of course, a subscription, so click subscribe. Don't forget to enable notifications. And as always, thank you very much for watching this video. I'm Falcon. You can follow me on Twitter, Falcon the Hero. We'll see you next time right here on Game Ranks.